dear students this lecture is a continuation of the previous lecture so if you recall your memory what we are going through the previous lecture was the basic working principle of scanning electron microscopy what it can do and uh, at the last stage we compare the scanning electron microscopy with respect to a well-known equipment to us which is light microscope so uh, we already have used the light microscope Helen um, either in 9, 10, 11, 12 or um, maybe the bachelor degree program. So light microscope is well known to us. Um, however, the counterpart which is the uh, equipment of today's discussion um, and also the, the, the equipment of the last lecture was the scanning electron microscopy. So scanning electron microscopy is somewhat a new concept for us, a new technique or new equipment for us, whereas light microscope uh, was well known to us. Uh, so there are similar things or uh, similar components, um, not similar components means to say that the schematics, if we see both uh, the uh, schematics of both equipments, then there are some similar terminologies uh, between both of them, such as the condenser lens, objective lens, specimen, observer, detector, sources like in light microscope, um, uh, light is a source where scanning electron microscope as the name suggests, electron gun is a source. Uh, so there were some common terminologies between the both the equipments. However, the working principle is very much different and also the uh, good thing and the bad things are much different for both the equipments. So in uh, the uh, so today's lecture will be commenced with the uh, comparison between the light microscope and the scanning electron microscope um, on very specific terms. Um, so I, I made a tabulated form of a comparison. So the first part is the radiation type or the source type. In case of light microscope, as I already mentioned that, the in, the, in case of light microscope, uh, the source is the light or visible light, you can say, which is produced by the um, bulb, the tungsten filament bulb, normally we use in the lab. Um, and the, whereas in case of scanning electron microscopy, the beams of electrons are uh, bombarded via the electron gun. So the radiation type in both the cases, uh, they are totally different. I will, I will repeat it again. In case of light microscope, the radiation type is visible light, whereas uh, in case of scanning electron microscopy, beams of electron is the radiation type. Um, the second um, comparison between uh, uh, light microscope and the uh, scanning electron microscope is the wavelength of radiation. As the name suggests, the light so in case of light microscope, uh, the visible range that we, um, no, the normal human being can see is in the between 400 to 700 nanometers. So same is used for the uh, light microscope. Uh, whereas in case of um, scanning electron microscope, uh, the source is electron. So the effective length is very much narrow, uh, very much small, which is less than one nanometer. So it's a huge difference between these two equipments. So in case of uh, light microscope, the uh, range of wavelength is 400 to 700 nanometer, whereas in case of electron microscopy, scanning electron microscopy, the effective wavelength is less than uh, one nanometer. And because of this less than one nanometer, um, there is advantage for scanning electron microscopy in case of um, magnification, in case of resolution. So we will discuss uh, these two items um, uh, later on. Um, in this slide. So uh, the third very important thing, um, it's different, uh, different between both light microscope and the scanning electron microscopy is um, how image is formed. So in case of uh, light microscope, the light uh, waves, uh, they pass by the specimen and then they get scattered. And the scattered lights are read and the scattered uh, light rays are redirected toward the um, eyepiece uh, 
uh, or to the human eye via objective and condenser lens. Um, whereas in case of um, um, scanning electron microscopy, what is happening that the electrons um, that bombarded on the specimen, um, they can either be absorbed by the specimen or they are passed by. So if they are uh, absorbed by the specimen, then that part of the uh, specimen will appear as a dark part. Um, whereas the when electron pass by the um, specimen, so at those regions uh, become the brighter regions. So both these um, electrons, either they are absorbed, will appear the the region will appear as a dark region, or either they will be passed by the specimen, uh, they appear as a um, brighter regions. So in case of uh, scanning electron microscopy, there is a uh, contrast between um, dark and bright regions. Uh, whereas scanning uh, whereas light microscope, what is happening like the light rays, they are uh, passed uh, by the um, specimen and they get scattered. And because of this scattering effect, um, uh, we can um, have a better magnification of uh, the, the small object appears uh, on a larger scale to the human eye. Uh, the, the fourth comparison between both of them is how image is formed. Um, in case of a light microscope, um, human eye can directly uh, observe the uh, specimen uh, on very on, on a on a bigger scale on a higher magnification. Um, the light, as I earlier mentioned, the light rays pass by through the uh, condenser lens, then to the specimen, then objective lens, and to the eyepiece and the human eye. So. Um, in, in, in case of light microscope, human eye can directly view the light rays. Uh, the light rays, after passing through the specimen, uh, can reach to the human eye. Whereas in case of scanning electron microscopy, this thing is not possible because the electrons that are, are bombarded by the electron gun, they are of much higher energy. If they are viewed by a naked eye, then uh, there is fair chances that um, uh, the, uh, the human eyesight uh, may be deteriorated uh, because uh, the high energy electrons, uh, they can uh, destroy the cells um, uh, of human eye. So uh, direct observation of the specimen on, higher uh, on, on a very much higher magnification is not possible with uh, the scanning electron microscopy. So in case of scanning electron microscopy, we need some specialized detectors to uh, which collect the uh, reflected electrons or uh, electron that pass by the sample. So uh, by um, uh, varying intensities in the electrons that are collected by the detector, we can see an image in uh, bright and dark contrast uh, bright and dark contrast. So uh, uh, it, the uh, the image formation is totally different in case of light microscope and the scanning electron microscopy. In case of light microscope, the um, image is um, uh, the magnification uh, the uh, the the image of specimen on very high mag magnification can be directly viewed by the human eye. Where I whereas the scanning electron microscopy. The, we need specialized detectors who form the image in the light and dark contrast um, uh, on very high mag magnification. Um, so the last uh, uh, comparative um, uh, decision between the uh, light microscope and the um, scanning electron microscopy is the uh, typical resolution. Uh, how we can differentiate different um, uh, bodies or objects within the specimen. So in case of uh, light microscope, the minimum resolution that can be possible is uh, is uh, nearly 200 nanometer. Below 200 nanometer, it's nearly impossible, um, which can be viewed by the light microscope. So this is the lowest, um, uh, or we can say the highest resolution we can get uh, by the uh, 
scanning uh, the, uh, by the light microscope uh, because there's a limitation. You can, uh, you can see that visible light is the uh, 400 to 700 nanometer. Even 200 nanometer is very much low below this um, number, but uh, via some specialized tools, uh, we can um, get this 200 nanometer resolution. So this 200 nanometer resolution is um, possible due to very specialized equipment coupled with the light microscope. So uh, below this 200 nanometer, uh, we cannot go through. Uh, whereas scanning light electron microscopy, the, the newest version of the scanning electron microscopy can go uh, at about 0.5 nanometer resolution. So this means that uh, we can see some of the atoms, the heavy atoms, uh, by scanning electron microscopy uh, because um, the size of atom is about one angstrom to uh, five angstrom. One angstrom is equivalent to 0.1 nanometer. So if you convert the angstrom to the nanometers, so one angstrom to five angstrom will be converted into nanometer at 0.1 nanometer to 0.5 nanometer. So some of the heavy at, uh, atoms can be, can, it's possible to view by scanning electron microscopy. The next comparison between electron microscopy and the uh, light microscopes um, is the advantages uh, and disadvantages over one another. So um, in case of light microscope, uh, we can view the uh, li uh, living cells and tissues. Uh, this is possible because uh, the specimen is placed uh, in the normal room condition. Whereas in case of scanning electron microscopy, the sample is placed in um, a very high vacuum. So um, if there's a vacuum, so the chances of survival of any living cell or tissue is nearly zero. So we can view the living cells and tissue in a light microscope, uh, but it's impossible to view living cells and tissues in a scanning electron microscopy. The second thing is about thickness of the sample. Uh, in case of um, uh, um, light uh, microscope, uh, uh, the, the um, sample thickness should be uh, so small so that light can be um, uh, transmitted or light can be passed by um, through the sample. Uh, if this is not possible, then the light will be blocked by the specimen and you will not get any type of image um, on the other side. So in case of light microscope, it's very much important that the sample should be uh, nearly semi-transparent or transparent so that light can pass by because condenser lens, uh, the, the sample is placed between condenser and objective lens. So light passed by the condenser lens, then the sp uh, specimen, after the specimen, the light gets scattered, um, uh, then it get focus on the, um, it, it can focus by the uh, objective lens and then to objective lens to the eyepiece and the human eye. So uh, in case of light microscope, um, the sample thickness is very much important. So it should be um, very much thin so that it can be either semi-transparent or transparent. Whereas in case of um, scanning electron microscopy, the thickness is of non-importance. Uh, you can uh, have a thick um, um, specimen because um, in case of scanning electron microscopy, uh, we can only scan the surface only. So the bulk, so there are two things, the surface and the bulk. Um, how I can show you this, uh, the surface and the bulk. Uh, for example, your hand skin is the surface, whereas the bulk is the flesh and bones. I will repeat it again. If you see your hand, the skin is um, the skin of your hand is uh, the surface, whereas the bones and the inner flesh, uh, these are called bulk bodies. So, in case of scanning electron microscopy. Um, we can um, scan the surfaces, um, so thickness is not important. Um, whereas in case of uh, light microscope, um, the sample should be 
so much thin that it either can be transparent or semi-transparent. Um, how about the um, depth or mean? Uh, you can view 2D or 3D um, objects. Um, so in case of light microscope, only 2D objects can be viewed, not the 3D. Uh, because as I early mentioned that the sample thickness should be so small that it um, either be a semi-transparent or transparent. So in that case, um, we can only have a 2D image. Whereas scanning electron microscopy, um, although it scans the surface only, uh, you can get the surface topography only, but for some time, um, by some uh, specialized tooling, we can have a 3D type of image. Um, so it look like 3D, but in basics, um, we can get 2D objects. But there is certain advantage like SCM, um, SCM over the light microscope in light microscope, it's nearly impossible to get a 3D. But in case of scanning electron microscopy, to some extent, we can get a 3D type of filling. Uh, how samples are prepared in case of scanning uh, in case of light microscope, sample preparation is very much simple and it consume a very less time as compared to the uh, scanning electron microscopy. So the sample preparation in case of uh, scanning electron microscopy is Sometimes it's a bit hectic and very much complicated. Sometimes uh, we need a conductive coating over the specimen. Um, so there are so many things that we have to be, uh, we have to take care in case of scanning electron microscopy. So the advance, the advancement in the equipment um, has some advantages, but also um, there are some disadvantages as well, such as in, sc in scanning electron microscopy, the sample preparation is a bit difficult. Um, sometimes it's a bit difficult. Um, similarly, uh, like magnification, in case of light microscope, the magnification is comparatively a bit lower than the uh, scanning electron microscopy. And similarly, the resolution uh, is um, somewhat lower than the scanning electron microscopy. Uh, this is all because of the sources. In case of light microscope, the source is light. So that's why uh, the, the wavelength of visible light is from 400 to 700 nanometer. And that's why we can only reach to a couple of hundred nanometers in case of uh, light microscope. Whereas in case of scanning electron microscope, um, the source is electrons and the electron um, uh, the dimension of electron is much less than the nanometer. So uh, by this way, uh, we can have a very higher magnification and higher resolution. Um, what are the limitations to the scanning electron microscopy? Uh, so uh, although a scanning electron microscopy is a state of art equipment and it's used extensively in the uh, material characterization labs, um, but uh, it has some limitation as well, uh, such as um, uh, the basic purpose of uh, scanning electron microscopy is to quantify the surface of an object or a specimen. So by scanning electron microscopy, we can view the surface, um, how surface look like. Uh, also, we call it surface morphology or surface topography. So morphology and topography are a, a bit sophisticated words, but the basic meaning is same, that you can view the um, uh, surface of a specimen at very much at very much higher resolution and magnification. Uh, but we cannot uh, judge the surface roughness by scanning electron microscopy. As I already mentioned, that um, by scanning electron microscopy, you you have a 3D type of filling, but in basics, it can only give, uh, or it can only extract the image in 2D formation. 2D means a plane, X, Y plane. 3D means the X, Y, Z. So the Z um, axis will give you uh, depth of field information, like 
how much low or how much high is the uh, surface at that point. So in case of scanning electron microscopy, we have a little bit um, feeling of 3D, but in principle, um, uh, by scanning electron microscopy, uh, we cannot judge the surface roughness uh, in the quantification scale, not the qualification. Uh, quality and the quantity, these two are uh, different terms. Uh, quality means you can view and you can say, okay, the surface is rough or not. But if I say how much it is, uh, the roughness is, it's, you have to quantify how many nanometer the surface roughness is. Then in that case, SCM will give you no information. Or the information extracted by the SCM will be false. So uh, for, uh, to measure the surface roughness, we have a very special type of equipment. It's called AFM or atomic force microscope. So by atomic force microscope, uh, which has a probe and um, either it is uh, contact mode or not contact mode, depend upon the uh, atomic force microscopy. Uh, so by this way, uh, you can uh, judge the surface roughness both in qualitatively and quantitatively. So scanning electron microscopy can give you something like, okay, the surface is rough, but it cannot give you quantification that how much roughness it is. Um, the surface roughness and the depth of specimen is they are interlinked. So I already mentioned that uh, in case of um, scanning electron microscopy, um, it's not possible to view the uh, Z dimension or depth of field. Yeah, by tilting a, the sample uh, at its position, we can have uh, some feeling of depth of field. But in principle, it can only give you 2D information. So the third dimension or z-axis, uh, we can create it by um, a mechanism or some special tools, but it will be additional to the scanning electron microscopy. In simplest form, we cannot have a depth of field, uh, depth of field information of, um, uh, uh, for the scanning electron microscopy. Uh, the last thing that mentioned here is the, um, it's not possible to um, uh, perform experiments on liquids, chemical reaction, uh, and air gas systems, uh, because uh, uh, in case of scanning electron microscopy, uh, the specimen is under high vacuum, and because of this high, high vacuum, uh, we cannot test liquids, chemical reaction, and gas, uh, uh, air gas systems analysis. Uh, yeah, by doing some uh, specialized, uh, by combining SCM with some specialized tools, uh, we can get this information. But in simple SCM, no, we cannot do that. Um, what SCM can do is the atom by atom scanning. Um, as I already mentioned you, that the, um, the resolution of SCM is about 0.5 nanometer or 5 angstrom. Yeah, the heavy atom, you can, to some extent, you can view it by um, scanning electron microscopy, but most of the atoms, they are much less than the uh, 0.5 uh, nanometer scale of 5 angstrom. Um, so at that case, uh, it's nearly impossible uh, to view the atom by atom arrangement um, inside the specimen. Yes, by some uh, specialized tooling, uh, if we couple some specialized tool with the scanning electron microscope, yes, we can do that. Uh, but um, it's of uh, different system. So in, in simple SEM, it's not possible. Uh, the other thing is very important for us is the um, elemental analysis. Uh, uh, so in uh, elemental analysis means that in a case of SEM, uh, we have a special detector um, coupled with the SEM. So we can um, analyze the um, composition of elemental composition at, at each point on the uh, specimen, but the, this analysis is not possible below certain range. So below um, a micron range, it's not possible that if we magnify the, um, uh, if we magnify uh, the spot size uh, where the beam is focused and if we want to uh, further enhance it, 
by coupling it with the uh, uh, elemental analysis. So uh, at the very higher magnification, this uh, uh, system uh, does not support the elemental analysis. So uh, yes, you can do that uh, for the low magnification. Um, you can get some elemental information, for example, a, um, uh, the beam which is focused on the uh, sample and it can be viewed by the detectors. Um, you can get both the things, the surface, uh, how surfaces look like and also uh, the composition of surface uh, means that it's combination of iron, cobalt, nickel or something, uh, some other elements. So you can get both information at the same time. Um, um, SCM um, uh, operates under a very low vacuum. So if you have to perform some measurements at relatively um, um, normal vacuum, we have to say, then um, uh, it's not possible. So in case of SEM, we need a very high vacuum. So in case of um, high vacuum, we have to perform uh, certain measurements, it's possible. But if we decrease the vacuum, then uh, we cannot uh, um, get the image information because um, the vacuum in, uh, um, around the specimen is very much important. Um, vacuum means that there are no external atoms because if electron gun emits electrons and if they reach to the surface of um, specimen and then after hitting the specimen surface, the, the electron either uh, they um, um, reflected back or they impart some of it, their energy to the electrons of the atom of the specimen. And then the electron gets skipped and then some other detector may detect these uh, secondary electrons. However, if there is the vacuum is poor, then the foreign atoms, for example, air is um, uh, composed of different gases, oxygen, nitrogen, helium, hydrogen and some other, uh, some other gases, uh, even the bigger molecules, carbon dioxide or sulfur dioxide, um, they are also present. In case of um, poor vacuum or low vacuum, these um, foreign uh, gases may uh, come inside the chamber where there is a vacuum uh, near to the sample and by this the electrons will be um, deflected by this um, uh, these gases, these gases molecules, because these gases also uh, are made up of atoms. So if the electron hit these atoms, then you will not get the um, image of specimen's atom. Um, rather, you will have a artifact. Uh, the last thing about the, um, uh, uh, the SEM can't do in this slide is the conductive coating. Um, you need, in case of SEM, you need a very um, uh, reasonably conductive surface. If the surface of a specimen is not conductive, then you have to coat the uh, surface with some um, uh, uh, metals like uh, gold or um, silver sometime uh, or carbon to make the surface conductive. Fortunately, um, to overcome the limitations that discussed in the previous slide, um, there are some variation in SEM, uh, such as uh, uh, low vacuum SEM to perform uh, scanning electron microscopy in relatively um, normal vacuum or poor vacuum. Uh, also, if you want to perform measurements under a uh, very low temperature, then we have a uh, cryo uh, scanning electron microscope. Similarly, if we perform a measurement on the, uh, on the sample, uh, when the sample either has to be um, heated up, that means we have to increase the temperature or we have to decrease the temperature to some extent, it can be performed by the environmental scanning electron microscopy or ESCM. Also, there is a variant of SEM, it's called uh, FEB. Um, it's um, abbreviation of focused ion beam technology. So. It's also possible to um, do the focus ion beam analysis. And the last one is the electron beam lithography, EBL. Uh, so also it's possible to uh, perform lithography um, during the scanning. 
So these are the variants uh, of scanning electron microscopy so as to get rid of the limitation that were discussed in the previous slide. SCM is uh, relatively a new equipment and the history of SCM, the evolution of SCM um, is not more than 100 years old. In 1923, um, Bosch was the first person who demonstrated the, um, uh, the working principle of SCM that a uh, beam of electron can be uh, directed via magnetic fields. So, and these magnetic fields can be produced by either permanent magnets or the electromagnets. So this was the basic principle on which the whole SCM phenomena has evolved over a period of time. So the first SCM that was constructed uh, by Hardini in 1938 was the, uh, based on this uh, Bosch uh, demonstration of electron beam. Uh, later in for 1942, um, Zivorkin um, was a person um, who developed the SCM who has a re uh, re resolution of uh, 50 nanometer. Uh, later, um, the SCM was further um, get improved um, and the, all this um, improvement was made in the Cambridge University. So there, the Ortley was the first person um, uh, who made a significant contribution um, uh, for the improvement of the scanning electron microscopy. Uh, later, the um, uh, Macmillan in 1953 uh, has uh, developed uh, the first prototype and later um, uh, he achieved a resolution of 25 nanometer in 1955 by the Cambridge uh, Laboratories, uh, which is a spin-off company of this uh, uh, Cambridge University. Um, and the first SEM uh, was also developed by the Cambridge Instruments Company in 1965 with a resolution of uh, 20 nanometer. Uh, nowadays, most of the laboratories, they are equipped with SCMs, uh, which are not simple SCMs, but rather uh, the a SCM are coupled with different type of detectors, uh, workstations, props, uh, to perform a variety of uh, uh, functions. Uh, just as I already mentioned that uh, a simple SCM, uh, it works in the very high, under very high vacuum conditions and um, it has a limitation that it can only scan the surface of a sample in 2D uh, but with the specialized props, detectors and workstation uh, you can get even a 3D type of uh, scanning, uh, you can get a composition analysis, um, you can get a, um, a different type of testing inside the SCM just by heating the sample how the sample behave under different environmental condition means at higher temperature or lower temperature or in different environments. So you can perform these thing, this type of uh, testing even within the SCM. So now the SCM range we have in our laboratories, uh, they are much more sophisticated. They not only perform the very high resolution, very high magnification imaginaries, uh, like uh, you can get a 0.5 nanometer um, resolution image, but uh, you can also get a, a layer removal, layer by layer removal. For example, as I mentioned you uh, earlier that uh, SCM can scan the surface. We don't know what is beneath this, uh, this surface. For example, as I give you an example that uh, uh, um, the hand example that um, skin, the hand skin is your surface, whereas inside the flesh and bone is a blood is a bulk. Uh, some time, uh, some most of the time, we are much interested in the bulk as well uh, as well as well as uh, the surface. But SCM can perform scanning on the surface. So to see what is inside this uh, surface, we have to remove the surface. So uh, by um, lithography, um, uh, it's a very specialized technique to remove the surface of um, a specimen. So layer by layer surface is removed and you can see what is inside beneath each layer. So this is even possible in case of um, specialized uh, SCMs. So um, the SCM 
that we have uh, in the laboratories um, in the modern day, uh, they are very much versatile. Um, they are very much uh, sophisticated. And because of uh, uh, this sophistication, we can perform a diverse range of experiments, uh, which was not possible uh, like a decade ago. To give you a flavor that how an object uh, can be viewed by SCM and the light microscope and how they are different. So you can see in the top uh, right hand side, the image taken by the scanning electron microscopy on the left side and on the right side, the image taken by the light microscope. As the light microscope, um, you can have a um, image in the uh, wavelength of 400 to 700 nanometer. So this means that the diverse uh, color uh, rendering uh, can be observed by the light microscope. Whereas in case of uh, um, scanning electron microscopy, the um, um, display is monochromatic, um, which is the um, um, uh, variation in dark and the brighter regions. Uh, this is because of the electrons uh, that are um, bombarded on the object. And these electrons are either absorbed or reflected back or they are um, passed by the object. So because of uh, these different combinations, uh, the object can be seen in um, white and dark contrast. So whatever you can see via uh, scanning electron microscope, it is um, a um, dark and bright uh, contrast. So there is no true color in the uh, scanning electron microscopy imagery. But by uh, some uh, software tools, uh, you can uh, render the, um, op the, the images taken by the SCM to their true color or the color you want. To show you how real SCM look like, so here is the picture um, of the um, scanning electron microscopy available in a laboratory. Uh, so uh, it has different parts such as the microscope column, electron gone at the top, um, electron, uh, the column which supports uh, electron beam to travel from a uh, gun towards the sample, a chamber at the base, computer that drives the microscope, and additional batch controllers. Uh, additionally, there is a chiller to cool down the electronic parts and different pumps. Uh, normally, this chiller is placed outside the laboratory, but it has uh, some connection uh, with the uh, SCM. So now, um, um, the whole assembly of SCM um, is divided into subparts like top, there is an electron gun, then there is a specimen chamber. In between gun and chamber, there is a column um, where these uh, lenses are located, condenser lens, objective lens. Uh, samples are um, uh, submitted from the outside environment inside this chamber uh, via some specialized tools. And you have a uh, main controller uh, panel where you can uh, start the equipment, off the equipment, and you can see um, how different processes are, um, are working there inside the electron microscopy. For example, there is vacuum or not. Um, vacuum pump is on or not. Uh, so you can view this uh, basic controls uh, from the main control panel. And of course, all the operations are controlled by the computer control or computer console. So uh, there's a normally um, in, in old varieties, um, people used to with this uh, console where you can, you have a knobs um, to maneuver the magnification and focus. Uh, uh, and there is a uh, control gear to move the stage. Uh, nowadays, uh, most of the labs, they equip with uh, very simple technique like mouse and keyboards. So they are used to with this um, uh, mouse and keyboards and with different key functions and the touch, touch function on the screen. Uh, you can get uh, control over the uh, SCM. But the old version, they have uh, 
uh, this control um, panel with the um, uh, main computer. So the guys, the old guys um, um, who are working on SCM from last two to three decades, uh, they, they are uh, very much um, uh, used to with this control. And the new uh, researchers, they normally use a simple mouse and keyboard. Uh, if they have a, a touch screen, then they even can use a touch screen to um, maneuver different functions. Uh, that's all from today's lecture. If you have any type of questions or queries, then please let me know. Thank you.